Hi guys and welcome to this episode on Gaussian mixture models explained. So a Gaussian or a normal distribution looks like this and it has the following formula. It looks quite complicated, I know. There are two variables, mu, which is the mean of the distribution and sigma, which is the standard deviation, how spread out the data is. This can be extended to a multivariate Gaussian distribution where we're looking at higher dimensions. Mu then becomes an n-dimensional vector, giving the mean point in the distribution, and sigma becomes a n-dimensional covariance matrix, giving the shape of the distribution. Oval, not oval, tilted, not tilted. Since with clustering, we usually work in two or more dimensions, Gaussian mixture models apply multivariate Gaussian distributions to fit our data. Let's go for an example. Let us say we recorded the height and weight of different apples and oranges, and it looked like this. Now the objective of GMMs is to find parameters mu, sigma, and pi that best fit our data. Here, two multivariate Gaussian distributions have been fit to our data. The apple distribution is a normal distribution where we observe x given, given the mean vector of our apples and the covariance matrix of our apples, and the orange distribution has a similar distribution, but this time with the mean vector of the oranges and the covariance matrix of the oranges. Now, what is pi? Pi is simply the probability of an observation belonging to an apple or an orange. So probability of apple here is given as pi a and probability of orange as pi o. Let us now go through some maths of how Gaussian mixture models work. Take a single observation. The probability of observing this observation, x, is given as the probability of a data point belonging to the apple class times us observing x given it being in the apple distribution plus the probability of the data point belonging to the orange class times the probability of observing x given that it belongs to the orange distribution. Now since we have observed x, we want to maximize this probability. So for a single observation, we have the following formula, which we explained previously, but we want to maximize the probability of observing all of our observations. So for all observations, we have the following formula, where big N here is the number of observations and big K is the number of classes. So within the brackets, we simply have the probability of observing a single observation x, like we can see in the formula above. Now we simply multiply the probability of observing each data point together to get the probability of observing all of our data points. Now to maximize this, we need to find the derivative with respect to pi k, mu k, and sigma k, and set each to zero. We use the results of such in the expectation maximization algorithm. I won't go into details of how this algorithm works. I might save that for a later episode. It enables us to go from random initializations of our multivariate Gaussian distributions and iterate until they fit our data. There are certain stopping criteria such as the function we wish to maximize converges to some maximum. Pi k, mu k, and sigma k converge to some values, or we reach a set maximum number of iterations. Now, what are some considerations of Gaussian mixture models? Some advantages include, they are able to adapt to different size clusters, unlike k-means. They can adapt to different shape clusters, as long as they are roughly elliptical, and they are less sensitive to scale so you may not need to rescale your data before clustering. Some disadvantages include, GMMs assume a normal distribution of features. You may need to check this before clustering. They may not perform as well on clusters that are irregularly shaped. That is, they are not elliptic. And each cluster requires sufficient data since GMMs require the estimation of the covariance matrix. That brings us to the end of this episode and I hope you learned something new.